Hi, this is just a little video to introduce using algebra tiles for multiplying polynomials. So algebra tiles look like this. There's uh, sort of four shapes, a big square and a small square, and uh, long skinny rectangles. Um, the rectangles are as long as the big squares on one side and as long as the short squares on the other side. Using algebra tiles for multiplying polynomials is all about area. So let's talk about these things. Let's focus on the small square first. So the small square, we're going to consider that the side of the small square has a length of one unit. Since it's a square, the bottom is also one unit. So the area is one square unit. So we're going to use these to represent one. Now let's look at the rectangles. These rectangles have a short side that's the same as the square, so that's one. But the long side is a little tricky. If we try to stack up the squares, we'll see that oh, it doesn't quite work out. So I don't know exactly what that is. So in algebra, when we don't know what something is, we use a variable. Let's call this x. That means that the area of these guys is 1 by x, or x square units. Let's look at the big square. The big square has a side length of uh, the same as the long square, so those were x. So this is x by x, the area is x squared. So the big squares are going to represent x squared, and the rectangles are going to represent x's. Now here's how we use this. So let's put these together and think about this rectangle. Now these are separated a little bit just to make it easier to see, but imagine that they're all pushed together. Um, so there's two ways of thinking about the area of a rectangle. We can multiply the dimensions or we can figure out each part. Let's look at the top. Along the top we have lengths of x plus 1, 2, 3. So that's an x plus 3 along the top. If you look on the left, we have lengths of x plus 1 plus 2, or an x plus 2. So one way to write the area of this big rectangle is x plus 3 times x plus 2. But let's look at the areas of the pieces. I've got 1x squared, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 x's, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 1's. So I could also write this as x squared plus 5x plus 6. Both of these are equivalent because the area doesn't change just because I change how I look at it. Let's look at another one. So on this one, uh, we've got slightly fewer pieces. Um, along the top, I've got x plus 1, 2, so that's x plus 2. On the left, I've got x plus 1, so that's x plus 1. So I could write the area as x plus 2 times x plus 1. If I look at the pieces, I've got 1x squared, 1, 2, 3x's, and 1, 2, 1's. So that's x squared plus 3x plus 2. These are equivalent ways of writing the area. Let's look at one more like this, a bigger one. Oh boy, here we go. So first we look along the top. I've got an x, 1, 2, 3, 4, so that's x plus 4. Going down on the left, I've got an x plus 1, 2, 3, so that's x plus 3. So if we use those to write the area, it's x plus 4 times x plus 3. If we look at the pieces, I've got an x squared, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 x's, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 1's. So we write that x squared plus 7x plus 12. Now one thing you might have noticed is all of these numbers were positive. Um, so we can represent negatives using the other side of the algebra tiles. So this rectangle represents an x minus 5 on top because the, it's a minus 5 because those are red. And along the side it's an x minus 3 and it's a minus 3 because those are red. When we multiply a negative 3 times a negative 5, we get a positive 15. That's why the little 1 squares are all green. So we could write this as x plus 3, or x minus 3. So we could write this as x minus 3 times x minus 5. Or if we look at the pieces, I've got 
an x squared, I've got eight negative x's and 15 positive ones. So I could also write that as x squared minus 8x plus 15. If we look at uh, a smaller one like this, we've got along the top an x plus 2, and on the left an x minus 1. Now, since we're multiplying a negative times a positive, our 1's are negative. So the area using these are x minus 1, x plus 2, or x squared, because i got one of those, I've got two positive x's and one negative. Well, what happens if a negative x and a positive x get together? They go away. So I just have one positive x left over and two negatives. Now, this was just an introduction. You'll get a lot more practice as we do these. Okay, thanks. Bye.